He was the sharpshooting cowboy protecting his son on the rifleman, an athlete turned to actor whose commanding presence made him a household name. But even two decades after his death, aspects of Chuck Connor's life remain shrouded in mystery. Join Facts First as we take a shot at uncovering an untold truth about Chuck Connors. From Jock to Hollywood Star Before he was Lucas McCain on the hit series The Rifleman, Chuck Connors had a career as a professional athlete. Born in 1921 in Brooklyn, he grew up during the Depression in a hard-working Irish immigrant family. He displayed exceptional baseball skills, playing sandlot ball, and earned an athletic scholarship to prep school. He later attended Seton Hall on a sports scholarship, playing both basketball and baseball. It was during his college years he acquired the nickname Chuck after yelling encouragement like Chuck it to me to pitchers on the field. He was signed by the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1940 as an amateur free agent. He played in the minors for more than a decade, eventually making it to the major leagues in 1949. But after five weeks and one at bat, he was sent back down to the minors. He played briefly for the Cubs in 51 before ending up with the LA Angels minor league club the next year. But his demotion led to him pursuing acting opportunities in LA. He also played basketball for the Boston Celtics in the 40s, becoming the first NBA player to shatter a backboard. He stands as one of only 12 athletes to go pro in both baseball and basketball. According to reports, a casting director saw him joking and acting out in the dugout, dubbing him the Laurence Olivier of the Diamond. This led to a 1952 role in the film Pat and Mike, starring Spencer Tracy and Katherine Hepburn. More parts followed, including 1957's Old Yeller. His performance as a stern father in Old Yeller clinched him the lead role of Lucas McCain in The Rifleman in 1958. At six foot five with rugged good looks, Connors was physically suited for westerns. To prepare, he learned horseback riding, shooting, and stunt work. The Rifleman Legacy When the show premiered on ABC in 1958, it was an instant hit. It defined his career. He starred as Lucas McCain, a rancher raising his young son Mark in the New Mexico Territory of the 1880s. Connors said he took the role against advice to avoid doing a western, as the genre was supposedly becoming oversaturated on television. But The Rifleman stood out for its high production values and compelling storytelling. Much of the show's success rested on the appeal of Connors in the lead role. His physical presence, athletic build, and rugged good looks made him a natural for westerns. He let his hair grow out and purchased his first horse to learn riding. Each episode focused on Lucas McCain using his customized Winchester rifle to protect his son and confront various threats while dispensing justice and wisdom. The heart of the show was the warm relationship between the widowed rancher and his son. Connors had wonderful chemistry with his young co-star, Johnny Crawford, who played Mark McCain. Though Crawford was an established child actor, he treated the cast and crew with humility and respect. Off-screen, Connors further fostered a paternal bond by bringing Crawford along on camping trips with his own sons. At Connors' memorial service in 1992, a tearful Crawford gave a moving eulogy remembering his on-screen father as a close, real-life friend. During its five-season run, The Rifleman aired 168 episodes. Connors' commitment showed in doing his own stunts and learning to expertly handle the modified Winchester rifle that was McCain's signature. He even invited several sports celebrities like Don Drysdale, Duke Snyder, and Sid Gilman to make guest appearances as a nod to his athletic past. By the time the show ended in 1963, he embodied the role so completely that he struggled to find work afterwards without being typecast. Connors the Family Man and Womanizer Chuck Connors became America's ideal father figure, starring as Lucas McCain, but behind the scenes, he engaged in a string of infidelities that contradicted his wholesome TV image. In 1948, he married Elizabeth Riddell, a woman he had met while playing minor league baseball in Canada. They had four sons together over the next 13 years. But during the marriage, Connors reportedly had multiple affairs and illegitimate children. His behavior was an open secret in Hollywood, as he womanized despite wearing a wedding ring. According to sources, he charmed female co-stars and fans using his fame and physicality. Elizabeth knew of his unfaithfulness, but felt powerless to stop it. After divorcing Elizabeth in 1962, he remarried a year later to an Indian actress named Kamala Devi. Their tumultuous union lasted less than a decade 
amid rumors of domestic abuse and jealousy over Connors' continuing infidelities. One colleague said Connors could be alternately generous and cruel depending on his mood. In the 1970s, now in his 50s, Connors continued pursuing much younger women. Reports indicate he leveraged his position as a TV star to attract 20-something actresses and models. A 1977 marriage to Faith Cuevas, a former Playboy bunny, less than half his age, quickly ended after three years. Throughout these relationships, Connors conducted affairs casually with little discretion. Friends stated he felt untouchable in the wake of rifleman fame, behaving as if normal rules didn't apply to him. His cavalier attitude towards marital vows stood in stark contrast to the morally upstanding figure he played on television. While few denied his magnetism and charisma, his serial infidelity left damage in his wake. Staunch conservatism. In liberal Hollywood, Connor stood out for his vocal conservative politics and support of Republican figures like Richard Nixon and Ronald Reagan. Though known for Westerns, he became actually close friends with an unlikely pal, Soviet leader Leonid Brezhnev. Their bond stemmed from Brezhnev being a devoted fan of the riflemen and Westerns in general. During a 1973 trip to Russia, Connors even gifted Brezhnev two custom Colt revolvers. Some say he mediated back-channel talks between Brezhnev and Nixon. Yet Connors proudly aligned himself with conservative values despite maintaining a friendship across the Iron Curtain. He actively campaigned for Senator Barry Goldwater's 1964 presidential bid and marched in support of the Vietnam War. Later, he was a zealous booster for Reagan's California governor run and subsequent presidential victories. Unlike many in Hollywood, Connors openly criticized liberal politics and anti-war sentiment. He reportedly refused high-paying offers to appear in comedy bits mocking Westerns and his rifleman character. Some even say he got blacklisted for a period due to his outspoken views. Final Years In the 70s and 80s, he continued to act in a mix of films and television series, but never found a role as iconic as Lucas McCain. As one of his first major post-rifleman projects, he starred in the series Branded from 1965 to 66. The show lasted two seasons but failed to achieve the same popularity. He also appeared in the miniseries Roots in 1977, earning an Emmy nomination for his role as a cruel slave owner. On the big screen, he had parts in dystopian sci-fi like Soylent Green alongside Charlton Heston. In his later years, he reprised the rifleman role in a 1991 made-for-TV movie, The Gambler Returns, The Luck of the Draw. A year later, he was diagnosed with lung cancer after being a lifelong smoker. He died at age 71 after being hospitalized for pneumonia. While his acting career slowed towards the end, his turn as Lucas McCain ensured his cinematic legacy. He earned a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 1984. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Chuck Connors? Let us know in the comments section below.